Welcome to Video Church School for the Seekonk Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. My name is Kristen Putney, and I am the Director of Faith Formation and Youth Ministry. Welcome everyone. If you are new viewing, great to have you. I want to let you know that this is a multi-age experience, so everyone in the home is welcome to engage. I always like to begin on the altar, and I have a very special altar, and I like to describe what I have here, and often it has to do with what I'm going to speak about, in particular, scripture. So, of course, I have flowers from my garden, a cross made by the church school children. I have two special things that are going to have, they're going to uh, tell us a little bit more about um, the story and the theme, the Christ candle. And then beyond this row of rocks, I have a photograph of a boat. It's a sailboat. It's a very special sailboat because it's a picture of my father's sailboat. Uh, my father has passed away, but um, I have this picture on my wall, and I think about the stories, the many stories he told when he was out on his sailboat. And some of them were actually during unexpected storms. That's a, a little clue to what our story is going to be about. Before I get into those details, I would like to center us with some special sounds of a wind chime. And so, if you could just settle your hearts and listen to this sound. Of course, chimes are beautiful and they work best when the wind is blowing. And that has to do with our story today, when the wind is blowing. So if you can just settle your hearts and listen. I always like to do three things when I spend this time with all of you. And the first is a way to pray. The second is sharing scripture or a special story. And then I like to finish it up with some sign language. So today, we're going to do a special way to pray. A very unique way to pray. And it is our first activity. I always send out in an email all the different supplies that are needed. Um, and I do consider the fact that you're at home, maybe you're not out at the stores, so I try to use what we have around the home. So this way to pray is called Storm in a Jar Prayer. So the first thing you need is a jar with a lid. If you don't have a jar with a lid, a water bottle would be fine with the lid. And all you need to do is fill it with water you can fill it almost to the top with water. Add, of course, a good handful of beads or glitter or um, different tiny items that are maybe colorful that will float and move in the water. And after you add the water, you're gonna add just a little droplet of oil, vegetable oil, and a little tiny droplet of dish soap. And then you're gonna put the cover on tightly and this is going to be a way to pray so I talked about the wind chime and how the wind makes it move best and then you get to hear the sound and that sounds very pretty when the wind hits the chime however I started to tell you a little bit about my father going out in his sailboat out in the ocean and the wind would pick up and it would get very windy and very stormy and the boat would rock back and forth. I've been on a boat and that has happened. Um, and so it makes me think about how that's kind of a scary time, a stressful time, right? In a storm, there's a lot happening and your heart starts to race. So in life, we sometimes we don't even have to be in a boat to feel that way. There's a lot of different things happening. Certainly in our world right now, uh, we are out and about and enjoying the summer, 
but many of us are thinking and planning for the future, which is the fall, going back to school. And there's been lots of different conversations that maybe make us a little stressed out, perhaps. So this jar, actually, this prayer jar, it's wonderful for children to experience, but I think adults could utilize it as well. They could, you, all of you in the home could utilize it. So I have provided a prayer, and I'm going to read the prayer, but you will have the prayer in the email that I sent to you, but you can certainly make up your own words. So, of course, we're going to swirl the jar to represent the storm. Okay, see all the beads? Everything is swirling. And I'm going to say a prayer. Dear God, I am feeling like I am in a storm. Things are moving fast in the wind. Please settle my heart and calm my soul. Be still, my soul. And then what you would do is place the jaw down and stare at the jaw and breathe. And as you breathe in and breathe out, watch the jaw and everything in it settle. The bubbles go up and the little pieces go down and say to yourself, be still, my soul. And you can say it a few times. Be still, my soul. Be still, my soul. Be still, my soul. Amen. And so, hopefully, this can represent how you feel inside. Things are moving quickly like a storm. And then when you center with God, you are able to be still and be calm. And so that'll, it'll clear up even more. There's another version that I would like to share with you beyond ourselves. And that is the version that you could utilize this if you feel the world is getting like a storm. Maybe there's a lot of conversation and a lot of different things happening and it just feels uncomfortable and maybe you're restless and stressed. Always a great time to pray. So I would invite you to almost say the same words but utilize the word world. You twirl this around again and you could say, Dear God, the world is in a storm right now Things are moving fast in the wind. Please settle the world right now. And then hold the jar, let it settle, and say, Be still, world. Be still. And make a wish and a prayer for the world. Amen. This is a, a great activity. There are many like that online. Um, some of them use just glitter or glitter glue. They may use soap. They may use um, bath beads. And so certainly look them up online. There's a great one in here. This is, the, I've recommended this book before, Mindfulness for Children by Tracy L. Daniel. This one in the back is called, I love it, Settle, settle your glitter. And so you would have a jar filled with glitter and water and, and glycerin. And it would be a technique that you would calm yourself down as you look at the glitter and as it settles. I didn't have glitter and I didn't go out because I wanted it to represent what would we have in our home. Some people have glitter, some people don't. So yes, the story, if you haven't already guessed it, it's about a boat and a storm, and it's about Jesus. Jesus comes the storm. I'm going to read that to you out of this book here. And let's see where we are. It's from the New Testament. It's called Master Trouble at Sea. 
one of the books I have in church school. I Am, 40 Reasons to Trust God by Diane Stortz. Bible stories, devotions, and prayers about the names of God. Uh, let's see. I have that page. I thought I had a marker in it, but I guess I don't. That's okay. Trouble at Sea. They went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing from the book of Luke 8. And this is uh, chapter 8, verse 24. It's also in the book of Matthew, excuse me, in Mark and Luke, so all three. Sometimes Jesus stayed so busy teaching and healing people that he and his disciples didn't even have time to sleep. Jesus was glad to help people in these ways, but sometimes he needed to rest. Near the end of one busy day, Jesus said to his disciples, let's go across to the other side of the lake. So they all got into a boat and soon Jesus fell asleep on a cushion at the back of the boat. After a while, a strong wind howled and churned up the waves on the lake, but Jesus didn't wake up. The waves are getting bigger, the disciples said to one another. Oh no, hold on, here comes a wave that's going to crash right on top of us. The big wave rocked the boat on its side and water began filling the boat. We're going to sink. If this keeps up, the disciples yelled, we might drown. But Jesus still didn't wake up. Everywhere the disciples looked, giant waves were all over everywhere that they could see. The wind and the waves kept pounding the boat. But through it all, Jesus didn't wake up. Finally, some of the disciples went to the back of the boat where Jesus was sleeping. Master, Master, they cried, save us. Don't you care that we're going to drown? Jesus woke up. He saw the storm and his frightened friends, and he knew what to do. Wind, that's enough, he said. The wind stopped blowing. Peace, be still. Jesus said to the sea, the waves stopped crashing and the water was calm. Jesus turned to his disciples. Why were you afraid? Where is your faith? The disciples didn't know how to answer him. But they said to one another, How amazing and wonderful Jesus is. Even the winds and the waves obey him. So I wanted to talk about this great story. Here's the picture. If you look at closely in the boat there are the disciples which one are you are you the one holding on tightly to the sides or to the pole are you the one maybe hanging off because you feel quite ill or maybe you're another one in the boat that's holding on to a friend because you are quite scared or maybe you are in the boat and you're helping to manage the sail and to steady the boat. So as you can see, before Jesus calmed the storm, all the disciples were just like us. In the boat, afraid, right? The storm was happening and then an amazing thing happened and Jesus calmed the storm. And all of the disciples were calm as well. So that's a great story and message for all of us to think about when we are full of a storm-like feeling. And I think that all of us can look to Jesus and ask Jesus to be with us and think of those words, Be still, my soul. I have another activity, and it's activity number two, and here it is. This is the end result, but this is a stress ball, right? See, you hold it, and it squishes. So I'm going to explain to you how to make this, and again, you can look online. So you tend to use what you have 
in your home. I happen to have a balloon in the, in the house, so that was great. So the first thing you would do actually is you're going to get an empty bottle and fill it about this high with flour. You can fill it with sand if you have sand, but flour works nicely. And then you're going to open up a balloon and blow it up. So you stretch it first and then add air to it and put it on the top of the bottle. And that is actually, I forgot to back it up. It's best to make a funnel, a cone out of, I made this out of cardboard, cardstock, and place it on top of the bottle and then add the flour and then it'll go right into the bottle. So that's step one. The flour's in the bottle. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna be able to turn this over and slowly add the flour, hold on to the, the top of the balloon and it will go into the balloon. And then once you have it all in there, you kind of have to shake it for a bit. Once you have it all in there, you'll tie off the balloon. You want to be very careful because the flower wants to pop out of the balloon, especially when you're closing it up. So do it very slowly. Do it in the kitchen, perhaps. And I don't know if I dare do this. I think I'll try. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's going to work. Okay, so I have my flower. I figured out how much how much flour I needed in the bottle that would fill a balloon this size. Okay, it's got, it might get messy. So I'm gonna take the balloon off. So parents and an older sibling, it would be great to do this with the younger children. I'll put that down. So you're gonna let some of the air out slowly, slowly, slowly. When it gets down to almost no air, the flower's gonna wanna fly out. Okay, and then tie it off. And then, there you go. And you might wanna wipe it down. And then the best marker to use is a Sharpie. So you could wipe it down and make a face. You can make some some eyes and some eyebrows and then maybe some kind of a mouth there you go <laughs> how's that and there you go very simple and then the fun part adding the hair is you would need yarn and you're gonna take the yarn and you're gonna wrap it around your hand maybe 10 times. And then what I wanna show you, you're gonna take another little thin piece and tie off. So now it looks like this. And then in order to make the hair, you're gonna cut the loops on either end. So that the, the yarn went around my hand and then I took it off my hand and I pinched it in the middle. I tied it with another piece in the center and then I was able to cut the loops. So that is the hair. And then you can simply with two ends tie it to the balloon. And that is your stress ball. You can put hair on it or not actually. You can do any color yarn. And there you have it. So that it kind of gets silly, so I have two of them. So that's, as you know, stress balls are great for when you're feeling a little stress. Maybe a little storm is happening in your soul. And then the last part of today is sign language. And it's a very simple signing. We're going to sign for be still. We're really saying be quiet. So it's just this. Be still, be quiet. My, right, you point to yourself, my, and then soul. We're gonna use that for soul, soul. So it's be still in my soul. So as you move through your week, I hope that you can be still in your soul and know that God is with you and I will see you again soon. Amen.